You're listening to the Lawyers with Purpose Practice Success Podcast, hosted by Lisa Rozier, featuring attorney Dave Zampano, along with frequent guests. Whether you're a seasoned estate planning attorney, an attorney looking to add estate planning and elder law to your existing list of practice areas, or you're just starting out, this podcast will give you a solid plan for success. Listen now as Dave and his guests share their personal journeys to practice success and the insights they learned along the way. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number two of the Lawyers with Purpose Practice Success Podcast. I'm Lisa Rozier, joined by Dave Zampano, co-founder of Lawyers with Purpose. Dave, how are you? I'm wonderful. I, All I, right. I, I think I'm the luckiest guy I know. <laughs> there you go. I love that attitude. Um, so today's discussion, we are going to be talking about uh, the three business models that we really focus on um, at Lawyers with Purpose, and it's really... Um, the foundation of that you have developed as a, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a thought leader and industry leader. And we have three, um, that you'd like to focus on and I'll recap them. Yeah, or do you, you know, want to jump in? I, well, let me, let me get us from episode one to two, right? So last right. episode, we said, what is lawyers of purpose? And I kind of pulled the rug out from everybody's feet and said, it's not a not-for-profit uh, company. <laughs> right. That it's really about being intentional and purposeful. Again, look, um, my coach, Dan Sullivan, always said, uh, don't ever take advice from someone who hasn't done it. And one of the things I'm fortunate in is that I started, um, now I think I'm in my 30th year or will soon be starting my 30th year. And um, in the 30 years that I practiced building, I built a law firm, a successful law firm, and I built a national legal organization of lawyers that do that type of law. I've learned some things along the way. All I'm doing is sharing what I've learned. But what I've done is anyone who's read the email understands that there's three roles to any entrepreneur, right? E-myth is the entrepreneurial myth. The entrepreneurial myth is that people um, uh, succeed, you know, by having good ideas. And uh, no, it's normally people succeed by, I, I, if you look at entrepreneur in the dictionary, it's about someone taking financial risk to uh, kind of satisfy a need that others are willing to pay for, kind of. So when you think about it, um, one of the things I did, I, in 1999, I read the E-Myth and I did something very different. I was in a coaching program for seven years with about 130 lawyers. By the time seven years went by, we were down to about 70 lawyers. And I finally left the organization because that we were having the same conversation about the E-Myth. We're reading it and talking about it. And I had not talked about it. I began living it after I read it. And what I did is I started systematizing my law firm. Okay. I did exactly what the email said, like the pie maker, right? How do you make a pie? Well, okay. How do you do an intake call? What are the standards? How do you do a trust? What are the standards? How do you do a will? What are the standards? And over 10 years, 20 years now, I've just continued to build systems in a real live active law firm. And I think what makes this real relevant, what, what we do at Lawyers of Purpose is we're, we're living the life every day that we're teaching and we're growing and enhancing those systems and processes that have been developed now for 20 years and are constantly being reinvigorated and enhanced. And so that's the fun of what I do is that I get to go to work every day knowing that I get to you know, help my law firm do its day-to-day -day stuff. And I get to do it in a way where other law firms get the benefit from that. And what I've learned over the last 30 years is that there's three business models, right? So in, in the session one, we talked about what's a lawyer's of purpose mindset? What are the four elements of business, right? It was number one was you got to know what you're doing. Number two is you got to know how to market and enroll people into it. Number three is you have to operate your business successfully, you know, where you're making money. And number four is you have to have the right mindset. Well, once you do that, what I've learned is that over time that developed into three different models. Mm -hmm. okay? There's three different practice models that I have seen in my own success that I'm teaching others to do. And we've built systems and processes to emulate it and help others do it. The, the, the part I'm a little jealous about is my, um, my um, members do it much quicker than I did. So where it took me five years to get to a million dollar practice, uh, we're seeing members doing it in two and three years, okay? Why? Because 
somebody who did it, systematize it, process it, and we find it. So that's what we always like to do here at Lawyers with Purpose is always kind of shorten that curve of success. But again, as we talked about in session one, what is the prize? What's your level of success? So what we've defined is there's three levels of success you can have. And all three are worthwhile on their own. The first level of success is what we call the profitable law firm model. Now, the profitable law firm model uh, really is about the law firm who you know is up and down. One month they're making Boku bucks, the next month they can't make payroll, right? That that roller coaster. And how that's created is you know, we market, 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 and then we try to sell, and then we got all this work to do. So we stop marketing and then we go do all the work. And then with the work's done, we say, Oh my gosh, we haven't marketed, we got no one in the pipeline. And we're going up and down this roller coaster and we have inconsistent cash flow, inconsistent profitability. And hopefully at the end of the year, the lawyer ends up with more money in the bank than when they started, right? So yeah. that's based on a principle where lawyers pay themselves last. The first thing lawyers are going to learn coming into this organization is lawyers will pay themselves first, not last. The biggest mistake lawyers make. Way beyond this podcast, again, put it on the list for another podcast. Yeah, got it. No, here's the thing. Consistent profitability, getting the consistent profitability is the first level of success in the law practices. Consistent profitability, I have law firms that are consistently profitable and make money every month, month after month, and they're able to take vacations. And the beautiful part of this, you can stay at what we call level one, which is a profitable law firm model. You can stay there forever and be happy. In those law firm models, you're defining the level of profit you want and you're defining how to get there. I'll give you an example. Under our first model, it's usually a single attorney model with one to three staff, okay? And single attorney models under the LWP standards, a single attorney with one to three staff, when fully implementing the LWP model, will be generating between 80 and $100,000 of revenue and making anywhere from 25 to 50,000 a month in revenue. And, and I know that sounds crazy to some of you. We see it every day with our members. Here's the beautiful part. In this level, you can decide how much profit you want. If, if you want more vacation, then you decide you take more vacation and then your profit will go down proportionally, but you'll still be as profitable as you want to be. Because the whole model is, what do you want? What's the prize? So consistent profitability means you decide the level of profitability you want to be at and you build that law firm. And that law firm profitability model can usually be with you, the sole attorney, and one to three staff. And, 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 and we have seen those models grow up to $750,000 um, and even as much as a million dollars a month. $83,000 a month is, is, is very attainable by one attorney. You'll be probably closer to the three staff, maybe even get in the four staff, but again, very attainable. We've seen it many, many times in our members. And many people are happy there and you stay there forever. Great. But that's not true. Most people say, oh my gosh, well, now that I know how to do this, I want to do more. Right. Okay. Well, then what naturally gravitates to the second level is what we call the robust law, law firm. So once you get to be consistently profitable and you're lean and you're mean and you're efficient um, and you're proficient, as we defined that word in the last podcast, um, now you start to decide. You get the freedom to decide, do I want more than this? So the second level of robust is not, a, is not about changing what you're doing. It's about growing the number of people who are doing it. So in the robust model, we tend to see that might be when you add your second attorney. That might be when you add your fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh staff member. Okay. So now you're getting more than one person in each role. You know, the consistent profitability is one person in each role, everyone doing it in sync proficiently. The robust law firm says, you know what? We want multiple people in each role because now we can do a multiple of revenue. And as you grow, for example, the traditional law firm models say that for every uh, three to four attorney, there's one staff member. In the LWP model, it's for every attorney, there's three to four staff because we build a model where, again, like the pie maker in the EMIT, we have built systems where we can delegate down to other people this, the, the things needed to generate the revenue. So paraprofessionals, right? Client service coordinators. So the lawyer is there, but the lawyer's role is clearly defined. So that's the robust model 
is you start to build now a team. You might bring in a second lawyer. And again, you can see our paperwork around that to see what, what the revenue models are and the, and the operational level is. So robust, a lot of people are robust. And I'm going to be honest with you, the people running robust firms are generally making between $500,000 and a million dollars. And beyond that, um, it would be, um, could be as high as a million and a half dollars and $2 million. We have lawyers making that amount of money per year. Again, they didn't start there. Um, some, of their got, some of them got there in five years. Some of them got there in 10 years. Um, so this is not a push a button and get rich quick. And, and you got to want that, right? So what's the prize? So, so that's level two, which we call robust, right? Uh, the robust practice. And I'm going to kind of give you another way to look at all this in a moment. The third level uh, we call e-freedom. Um, so the e-freedom level firm is something that's very different. And, and the e in this, uh, in the lawyers of purpose model means entrepreneurial freedom. So when you think about Ray Kroc, those of you that know that name, you should know it, is the founder of McDonald's. Well, Ray Kroc actually was not the founder of McDonald's. The McDonald's brothers were the founder of McDonald's. Ray Kroc systematized McDonald's, okay? And Ray, Ray Kroc built a model uh, so that now you can go to over 20, 30,000 McDonald's anywhere in the world, and you know what you're going to get when you walk in that place, right? So Ray Kroc didn't flip hamburgers. But Ray Kroc, Kroc made a lot of money from people who flipped hamburgers. Ray Kroc didn't manage a single franchise by the time he went at, he had met the finish line. Ray Kroc created and, and created the vision and enhanced the vision and relationships of what McDonald's became. So under the Lawyers of Purpose E-Freedom model, this is for lawyers to say, you know what? I would love a law firm that sends me a check every month and I don't even have to be there. Okay. Now, again, from the advice of my coach, I've always loved the piece of advice Dan Sullivan gave me is don't ever take advice from someone who hasn't done it. My personal law firm, I'm part of, and I spend, um, one to three hours a month in the law firm. And I'm not in the law firm. Right. I spend right. one to three hours a month communicating with my law firm leader, um, on all the things you're doing. They run the law firm without me. They grow the law firm without me. And I do my role. I do my role, which is vision, the future of it, build new things for it, right? Create new mousetraps, create new ways to build new pies. That's what I do because that's my role. I'm an entrepreneur within that law firm structure, but the law firm operates without me. So for those lawyers that want to be an entrepreneur and want entrepreneurial freedom to pursue other things within their law firm and not be responsible for the day-to-day. -day. That's our ultimate model, which we have many of our members at that level, where the law firm generates revenue uh, in their absence and actually grows in their absence, right? Um, the definition of a successful business, someone once said, um, is when you walk away from it for, uh, I'm sorry, when you look at it a year later um, and it's bigger than where it was a year ago, I would say the definition was of an e-freedom law firm is, one that you look at a year later and it's grown and you were not there as part of the growth mm -hmm. other than in your limited role. So um, three models, you know, consistent profitability, robust. We want to grow it up and get our profits higher. Um, and then there's e-freedom where you want a business that generates revenue without you. Now, again, how I would say that another way is getting to level one is all about understanding the infrastructure of how to build a business operationally to become consistently profitable. And that's merely learning your five key focusers and what we have at Lawyers with Purpose, it's called the LWP KPI focuser. You run your business with the KPI focuser, you're gonna have consistent profitable business and you get to just decide how much. Um, that's level one. Level two is just say, okay, I want more. So level two is no longer about the infrastructure and the systems and processes. Level two is about the team and building your personnel, right? Because like I said, in the first one, you could have one to three staff and be very successful and profitable. Up to $750,000 we've had lawyers at that level with one to three staff. Um, in the robust model, you know, you have um, maybe the same amount of income, but less work you're doing in the day-to-day. -day. Okay, so that's where you get to focus more on the things that you do well. Um, and maybe it's just 
you know, driving the relationships, doing the relationship management for the law firm, things like that. So that's really about building your people and your team so that you have an infrastructure to scale. That's really what robust is about. And then e-freedom is really about bringing the two together where you have built now a team that the skill sets of the many um, together solve all the skill sets that you single-handedly brought to that firm to begin with. So what you did to bring it to make it successful in level one and two, you then can't get in one person, you build that in, into the infrastructure of the company and into several people. So several people combined equal you. So now the operation really continues to grow uh, and maintain profitability without you. And that's ultimate level three. And again, not all three levels are for everybody, but we've had people at level one for multiple years and then say, okay, I'm ready for level two. We've had people at level two for a long time and never wanting more. And we've had people been there three months and want level three. Um, yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. So you got to get to level one or two up. before you get to three. So long yeah. conversation for me about really the three core models, um, but there's a lot behind it. There's different systems, there's different mindsets, there's different marketing strategies, there's different operational strategies, and there's different mindsets for each one of those um, three models. So it's again, different level of knowledge, legal technical knowledge, different level of marketing and enrollment knowledge, different level of operations, different level of mindset if for each of those four. That's what, that's what the journey is about at Lawyers with Purpose. It's about being on that journey, clocking your destinations along the way, and then deciding uh, when you want to go to your next destination. Yeah, that just a, it's just great insight today of the conversation that we just had. I'm sure, you know, we started off in episode one, you made the statement that there's four different ways, regardless of what you're doing in the area of business. And listening to this, our business models, again, it is, even if you're not within our industry, it really is a, a way to take a step back and think about where do you want to be? Yeah, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's setting okay. the framework. It's the it's framework okay. for success. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. It's the, it's the framework to success. Absolutely. So, well, Dave, thank you for today. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, thank you for your time today. Always, always a great conversation. And for all of you that are listening, remember you can find all the information and uh, subscribe and listen to this podcast at lawyerswithpurpose.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Practice Success Podcast. Visit www.lawyerswithpurpose.com podcast to listen to other episodes and to subscribe. We'll see you next time.